about labor, hereditary optic neuropathy. Labor hereditary optic neuropathy is a hereditary optic neuropathy. Even though the patients are born with it, it doesn't manifest usually until they're older. And so the typical patient is a young adult male. Even though it is mitochondrially inherited, it's not clear why males are more affected than females because all of the patients on the maternal line are going to have the mitochondrial uh, deletion. So probably there's some exogenous factor or perhaps a nuclear cofactor or hormonal cofactor uh, or smoking or alcohol, which are higher prevalence in males that precipitates the mitochondrial threshold effect in labor hereditary optic neuropathy. Because it is mitochondrially inherited, it means that it is passed through the mother. So the mother, as you know, provides the egg, and that means it is the mother who is providing the cytoplasm and the mitochondria to all of her descendants. Cannot be passed through the paternal line, so even if you have an affected son, this affected son cannot pass the mitochondrial deletion onto his descendants. However, the females can pass. So the three most common labor hereditary optic neuropathy mutations are at positions 11, 7, 7, 8, 3460 and 14484. This accounts for 95% of the mitochondrial mutations that we see in labor. However, if you really think that the patient has labor, we could get the extra 5% by doing the entire mitochondrial DNA. So it typically presents in a young male, and their complaint is going to be acute, unilateral, but then bilateral, either sequential or simultaneous visual loss with a central scotoma or a secocentral scotoma. So it's going to be a bilateral, sequential, or simultaneous loss of center vision. Initially, the disc may look a little hyperemic uh, and might have pseudoedema, but if you do fluorescein angiogram, it doesn't leak. And uh, over time, optic atrophy develops and loss of papillomacular bundle. There's no real treatment for labor hereditary optic neuropathy, although mitochondrial. Uh, Supplements have been used, including coenzyme Q10. There's been a study on itibinone, which showed some modest benefit, but is not available in the United States. So we generally let our patients get the CoQ10 equivalent in the United States over the counter. We tell them to avoid the mitochondrial precipitants, smoking, alcohol, uh, marathon running, etc. But there's no real effective treatment. There's an ongoing clinical trial recruiting for uh, adeno associated viral vector uh, gene therapy, uh, but it's in the very earlier stages of the uh, trial. The most important thing to know about this is young, male, acute, unilateral optic neuropathy. We're going to image that, make sure it's not optic neuritis or NMO, but if everything's negative, we're going to be thinking about labor. We order the three mutations. The screening mutations, 11778, 3460, and 14484. 14484 is the most likely to recover. 117878 is the most common mutation, but it's the least likely to recover. 3460 kind of in between. Once you've established that it's mitochondrial, you have to counsel the patient genetically. The patient themselves cannot pass the mitochondrial gene, but the maternal line is at risk. And so the main job is telling the maternal line relatives about their risk. And it's mitochondrial, and so you should be thinking about it in any patient with central scotoma or secocentral scotoma. Think about labor hereditary optic neuropathy.